All right, welcome to the Total Connector Show. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for your time. Um, Desiree, I've been following you on Twitter for a long time, and uh, first of all, you did a great job together as a dream team with Stefan Levera. You know, it was infotaining, entertaining. It was, it was really, you, you brought great, it was really great content, great guests. I think people learned a lot. I talked to a lot of you know, experts, Bitcoiners, such as James Lop, Loop, uh, Lop. <laughs> and he said really he learned a lot, of, for example, about vulnerabilities. So before I go into the, you know, into the details, uh, could you, because um, this is the first time I have you on my show, mm -hmm. uh, at least on YouTube, because I'm, I'm planning to do a full hour, one hour uh, podcast show with you right. once we're back. Um, could you introduce yourself a little bit, your background, your path to Bitcoin? What's your, your vision? What is it that triggers you like, in a positive way? Uh, what do you see for humanity? Um, uh, and, and in the context of Lightning as a medium of exchange, as a, a free transactional you know, uh, structure platform, uh, just you know, let it flow. Yeah, definitely. Thank um, you. So yeah, I'm Desiree Dickerson, and I'm the head of operations at Lightning Labs, and I've been with Lightning Labs for about a year and a half, um, so I'm more on the you know business side of things. Um, we're a pretty small team, so how I got into Bitcoin is a kind of an interesting story. Um, it's kind of funny. So I don't have a relevant background whatsoever. Um, I actually have my master's in biophysics and physiology. Wow, exciting. Um, yeah, so completely in the sciences, and um, when I was in grad school, I um, was on I was, the program was very small, so like 30 people, and I didn't have like too many friends. Um, so everyone was a lot older, so I was constantly on Reddit all the time. And I, mean, I still am constantly on Reddit, don't get me wrong. Um, and I stumbled on our Dogecoin, strangely enough. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. these people are so nice. Like, And I just thought it was like such a cool community. You know, they were like sponsoring like you know, NASCAR and like college bull day games. Um, I, I just thought it was such a cool way, like the crowdfunding and just the community around it. And so you know, I followed along on that subreddit and, you know, that community for a while. And that kind of just evolved more to Bitcoin. I was like, oh, okay, this can be more of a serious thing. This isn't just, you know, a fun doge dog that we're like kind of playing around with. Um, so yeah, and then um, I went into management consulting for a while and did that and did a lot of um, consulting work with the federal government and I kind of became disenchanted um, with that whole that whole thing. And so I, you know, was like, okay, Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin is a great way to get around all these centralized like entities. Um, so I thought it was just like made so much sense for me to kind of jump ship and like dive in completely and I, I kind of been here ever since um, and it's, it's been really great and yeah that's kind of been my journey so far. So when you talk to people, um, I, one, I'm curious, what do you think, because we're still you know, in the early a, uh, stage uh, or early phase of this monetary evolution, uh, where do you see the biggest, um, the most difficult misconceptions that, to clarify with people? Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions that I see right now is you know, people kind of hype things up a little mm -hmm. bit too much. Like we need to be way more patient. Um, you know, Bitcoin, Lightning is not a solution for everything. I mean, know today that we joke that, you know, Lightning and Bitcoin they can't cure a hangover. Um, you know, but Twitter seems to think that, um, you know, <laughs> that maybe Bitcoin can solve all of humanity's problems, but um, it definitely can't. So, you know, and I gave a talk on um, different use cases at Crypto Springs this year, and it was more around, you know, hey, these are all really cool, but like there's nothing, we're not, we haven't actually solved like some insane problem yet, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, I love Poyo Feed, but like, you know, what utility does Poyo Feed really bring to the market? You know, it's not revolutionizing anything. And this is something, just the point that, yeah. you know, buying coffee is not actually like super hard. Like it's not really impeding on anybody's ability mm -hmm. to get their caffeine fixed the way we do it now. So like putting like the lightning framework over that like doesn't really change anything so i think that's what we really need to focus on i think that's a misconception that we're like already there that we're this we're ready to like go full-fledged like forward with this thing but i think we need to be patient and build and make right. sure things are working and that they're secure before we like kind of launch towards like mainstream adoption mm -hmm. so um what what do you what do you, do you see this in the next few years unfolding like uh, all these, uh, you know, problems, vulnerabilities, security, privacy, speed, scalability. Do you see this like 
like being solved in a way that we can like create totally new ecosystem infrastructures? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's really interesting. This community definitely responds to what the market's giving it. I mean, if you look at, if you remembered the lightning um, torch that happened mm -hmm. with um, Hadlunat early, earlier this year, like, you know, it was super fun, but we also realized a problem that a lot of people didn't, didn't, um, didn't really know how to deal mm -hmm. with like inbound liquidity, like inbound capacity, like how, like that was a huge issue with that. Like, and people were kind of forced to use custodial solutions. And so you see like, I mean, what, like, 15% of these talks have been about liquidity and liquidity markets. So, you know, there are problems, but um, they're definitely being addressed. Like the community here is, is working towards those issues. Mm -hmm. So and you see that also with the talks about, you know, security vulnerabilities. And we saw that, you know, last month uh, with the whole CVE thing um, that was, uh, that I don't know if you saw our blog post, but like, you know, there, there are going to be bugs. Um, and so we just need to to realize that and be prepared and then know how to handle it and, and, and kind of move forward from them. All right, uh, great. So, um, uh, Desiree, so uh, when, you, when you zoom out a little bit and you, know, you, you see and you read about it and you know, all these uh, geopolitical, macroeconomical things uh, compounding, like getting really crazy mm -hmm. all over the world, do you see this as a positive exponential accelerator for this whole process, that things are going to fall in place and because of that, uh, by the time things fall in place and in order not to, you know, uh, we don't want to have chaos. This is not what we wish, right? But it would be nice to have a smooth transitional system such as, you know, lightning. Uh, I mean, we, we are we already, you know, for 10, 11 years, we're in the store of value phase, let's just say. So we're going into this medium exchange where uh, there are investors and, and institutions coming in, big players. And of course, there's this critical, I call it the critical tipping point, um, you know, critical, I don't want right. to call it mass adoption number, whatever that is, because it might be like at, the, at this moment, like 30, 50 million people over the world. Could, do you think, first of all, do you think the critical number could be like a, a few couple of hundred million people? This is the question I always ask people. Is it half a billion? You know, because there's this there's this tipping point where that mass adoption is just going to go exponentially on a trajectory. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't know what the number is. Like, I, I wish I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be a lot easier to do our job if we knew yeah. <laughs> exactly what that number is. I mean, I think it's just, you know, I think it's going to happen slowly. And, you know, it might be a whole generational shift. Like yesterday when I moderated the gaming panel you know a lot of the folks who are creating these yeah. like game studios um that are built on lightning are really seeing like these kids who just get bitcoin they understand it and you know rather than um onboarding people directly mm -hmm. to bitcoin or lightning it was like really interesting to see that you know they're having successes with um introducing people to bitcoin and lightning through a use case like gaming mm -hmm. so i think it will be really interesting i don't know what the number is and i don't know exactly how it will happen but i think i think as we see like gen z grow um i, I think we'll see a lot of adoption um with that wave of, of mm -hmm. new adults cool um so uh what i was going to ask you is that um do you see uh do you see like uh, the next phase would be um one, you know people there are people in like in venezuela turkey iran argentine they they feel the pain points so right. it's inflation hyperinflation and what i'm trying what i'm trying to do also educational wise is that what is the potential of bitcoin in every shape and form uh like the the real uh, transformational changes structurally uh, the decentralization you know the openness the borderlessness yeah um, do you think that it, can, it can be uh, uh, communicated in a way that... I think it will be interesting. I mean, I think it will definitely put more power and put more autonomy back in, like, you know, the normal person, the normal mm -hmm. user's hands. I mean, if you look at um, use cases like Stackwork, um, yeah. most of the Friday mm -hmm. night party, um, you know, they're doing so many cool things with micro tasks and micro payments. So I think we're just going to see, like, a huge paradigm shift in the way that we do things, the way that we work. Um, you know the way like that that's the biggest one for like for me that i think is so cool where it, you know you could be like there's the ability to stream money so you could like stream pay like stream payments for doing wow. work yeah which is interesting because if you think about it like i 
believe in America, um, like 40% of of the American population is one paycheck away from poverty. Exactly. Um, yeah. So like the ability to access funds instantaneously rather than waiting a month or, you know, every two weeks to get yeah. a paycheck, I think that's something that's really powerful. And I think it puts, um, you know, it, it gives people the power back to like, the financial power back to like kind of live and not, not be slaves to these, um, you know, these corporations. Yeah, and we're talking about de developed nations actually, you know, like within no, Europe, yeah. you know, this is, the, this is what most people yeah. don't understand, you know. For the first time, maybe people a ask the question, what is money? I mean, why do why Bitcoin? Why you know what's so important about you know? Have we ever learned anything about money? And this is you know what also you know, people like Stephen Ladera, you know, with yeah. his podcast Austrian Economic, the principles of what is scarcity? What is absolute the relative scarcity? You know, what what does it have to do with money? <laughs> it's it's an incredible problem. Like the more that I read about it, like the less I feel like I know, you know, and I have less opinions because you know there's, there's feel so all the much same, out yeah. there. Like I wish I wish I knew. Like I think. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe I'll do some more reading and have some more like um, thoughts about that um, you know next time we tag up but yeah I mean it's like it, it kind of just starts to blow your mind like why why do we like put ourselves in these little boxes like we segment our thinking exactly you know, and, you know yeah. I mean, just when you start just thinking about Bitcoin you, you open up your mind about you know finance and, and money but then you know, kind of just extrapolates into other areas of life. So it just, yeah, it gets you thinking, like, exactly. why we do the things yeah. that we do. So final thoughts, or let me ask you just for a conclusion. Um, where do you see society or civilization once uh, things unfold or, or manifest exactly as, let's say, in the Bitcoin community as we wish, wish it for? Do you see, like, a different... Um, you know, a different civilization, like in whatever that is in 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, like structurally, socially, economically, even scientifically, technologically, like having to work maybe less, you know, having more wealth, having more, uh, yeah. you know, logical, ethical structures that, that you know, just, just create opportunities, you know, equal opportunities maybe at least yeah. for people. I, I mean, hopefully it will like bring less poverty. I mean, if not, like, I mean, the least thing that I think that we will see happen is at least people have more power mm -hmm. over, over their money mm -hmm. yeah. and they're not like, they're not just pawns in some, in some game that mm -hmm. these, you know, extremely rich people and, you know, extremely rich or powerful politicians, like just not pawns in those games. So I think, you know, it's just what I foresee happening is just giving the power back to people. And like, I think it will start um, with, with money and that will be Bitcoin exactly. and then we'll see yeah. what will happen from there. And like, that's where I think we'll see the, the real sea change. Yeah. It's funny, you know, every time we come to the root of this whole, of the symptoms and the problems, and that is money. I mean, it, it you know, if we don't have like They've a healthy been soil. they for years. Yeah. <laughs> money is the root of all evil, yeah, but yeah. they didn't say But that's that what we've Bitcoin. been told. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Cool. So, Desiree, thank you so much for your time. You want to like share your whatever, uh, oh, your Twitter handle? Yeah, or, definitely. Um, you can reach me at, um, at Dickerson underscore Des, D-E-S. Yeah, reach me on Twitter. Um, follow at Lightning. And... Yeah, keep up to date with this. And yeah, thanks for uh, being here and thanks for everyone for um, checking out the Lightning Conference. Keep up your beautiful work. Yeah.